Who is playing this game? Why are you playing this game? You do know that other games exist, right? You don't need to play this. Are you in trouble? Do you need help? Are you trapped here? Is this some kind of punishment? I cannot think of a single reason anyone would actively choose to play this game. It is offensively bland, right up until the point where it's offensively creepy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMO games I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff, ring the bell so you get all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Lunar Online Reborn, an anime-themed MMO that's only 3 gigabytes large and, according to the Steam comments, has been remastered by the fans, not the developers. So you know the experience we're about to have is what the fans genuinely feel is the best the game can be. The game launches and the background music is certainly something. In fact, music is a thing we'll come back to a lot in this video because the sound designer didn't know how to design sound. Character creation, you have a choice of three main races, human, elf, and edgelord. Obviously, I'm going with edgelord. Even the hairstyles and the face shape choices have amazing names. I'll go with the hairstyle, so cool, and the face shape, demonic ruby. God, I can feel the teenage angst from here. It's not a phase, mum. This is who I am. Give me my My Chemical Romance CD back. Game begins, WASD movement, but you can also left click to move. And just what the hell is that artwork? That anime style goddess avatar talking to me. I have literally just started playing. Can you wait a few seconds before thrusting the plot in my face game? At least the eyebrows of that avatar are animated and move as you click between the conversations, so they've put at least some effort into it. I'm told that pressing T brings up the tutorial. Ah, just what I love, a massive text dump with all the game tutorial listed at the start. Who needs hidden tutorials or learning via doing? Just dump it all on me from the first second. Terrific game design. Have a chat to Reen, press Q to open the quest menu. Now the quest list does actually contain all of the information we need, who gave us a quest, where it takes place, what to do, but it's formatted really badly. You've got text overflowing from the graphic of the box and some of the words get split over multiple lines, like the word board becoming board. This design style and design mistakes seem to be a hallmark of the Eastern anime child-friendly style, what I call MMO light. They are designed to be endless genocide simulators. I am willing to bet now that there will be some back and forth quests, some upgrade systems, but mostly an overwhelming majority of go and kill X quests that will slowly creep up in number. Let's just see if that happens. Quick music issue, the background music is on a loop, but when the loop ends there's a few seconds of silence. And then it just loudly boots up again. God, just make your music loop! How hard is that to do? Cross the bridge and start killing slimes. Christ, it's like they've read the big book of MMO cliches and gone, yeah, make that. We are a fallen demon on a mission from a goddess to save the land and the first thing we're doing is killing slimes. So combat, it's boring. Tab target, press 1 to auto attack, wait. That's it, that's the combat system. There are special abilities that we'll unlock as we go on, but nothing is actually any more effective than auto attacking and waiting. And the boss enemies, they are literally the same model as the other enemies, but bigger with more health. Oh, they also have multiple health bars, that multiple health bar thing going on where they're all different colours. I mean, it could have just been a single health bar and have it drain and let you see it draining, but no. Multiple health bars of varying colours were clearly the best way to go here. It's not a mechanical thing. It's not like one health bar is weak to one element and the next is weak to another element. It's just colourful for the sake of being colourful. There's a flashing button under the minimap, so I click it because flashing things usually mean please click me. And it's a stat point distribution. I mean, obviously, everything into strength. I'm going edgy McEdgelord. Gotta be super strong so I can one day say, Forgive me, master, but I must go all out just this once. Slimes killed, go and hand in the quest. What do you think Spacebar does? Did you say jump? Because that's wrong. Pressing spacebar engages auto run to current selected target. You know, like all the other MMOs that assign spacebar, the biggest and easiest to press button on the keyboard, to move to target. Now I learned some skills and this is just dumb. You open the skills menu and click learn skill, and then you learn another skill. 
but you don't have any choice in what you learn, and you unlock them all in order, and you can only see what the next skill will be when you click learn, and there's no skill tree or build choices or anything, it's just keep clicking next and you keep learning things. And you'll also be so overwhelmed with skills in the early game, you don't actually get any time to familiarise yourself with what they are, you just get loads of skills straight away. The entire game is basically auto attack while chugging potions, skills are irrelevant, but we'll see more of this later. I finished a quest and I get given an enlargement capsule, a pill that makes my avatar bigger. Why? Just why? I mean, okay, let's test this and... Okay, wow, yeah, it does make me bigger. I wonder if the effects of multiple pills can stack and... Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Real talk, this has to be a fetish thing. Right, this doesn't have any mechanical effect on the game. You don't hit harder or run faster or get new items. This is just a case of, congrats, you're bigger. This has got to be some weird wish fulfillment thing. I'm thinking this game is literally just designed to appeal to someone's kink. Next quest, kill some flowers. Well, I'm massive now, so the combat animations are a bit strange and the scale just does not work, but fine, we'll kill some flowers. I know, I've got a skill, combat heal. Using it refills some health, and it lets me discover my character is canonically voiced. Have a listen to what you actually sound like in this game. So I guess that's what we sound like. I hand in the flower quest, get some cool new gear, rapidly losing space in my tiny inventory, and now I have a horse. Cool. It's a bit small compared to my massive self, but oh good, sitting on the horse just resets me to normal size. But getting off it again keeps me enlarged. Good to know those pills weren't wasted. One interesting addition, all the enemies have speech bubbles and little quotes, and they're almost all insane. This turtle I walked past said, I wish I was as fast as Michael Phelps. I'm going to guess whoever localised the translation for this game just did not care. Oh, and the mount and unmount text option in the mount interaction box clip out of the box. In fact, a lot of the text in this game clips out of the box. Really small issue that makes you look really amateur, game designers. Now this quest isn't just kill enemies. Oh no, look at the quest description. I need to subjugate them. So almost all of the quests in the game so far have been kill X amount of enemies, and back at the quest hub, this NPC says she's older than she looks. Of course, game, I'm sure for legal reasons you're actually a 1,000-year-old dragon queen who chose to appear as a teenage girl. At least the in-game model matches the anime avatar they've used, so that's decent. These turtles are just... I'm spending a lot of time reading what enemies are saying. This turtle just said, my personality used to be different from when I was younger. Wow, you don't really expect self-reflection from a turtle in a painfully generic low-budget eastern MMO, but here we are. Now fighting this boss hurts, so I drink a potion and that's when I see it. Current potion supply, 15 out of 6,000. Ah, right, it's one of those games. The combat is just going to devolve into spam potions and outheal the enemy and you win. I'm willing to bet they'll sell HP potions in the cash shop. In fact, let's take a look at the cash shop right now. Strangely, it actually opens a new window, so my Windows-specific recording software doesn't pick it up, but here it is. It sells everything you could need. HP potions, max HP boosts, max MP boosts, experience potions, limited time mounts, inventory expanders, weapon and armor enchantments. If someone ever asks you what pay to win looks like, just show them this cash shop. Also, if someone ever asks you why you don't put diagonal striped blue background underneath a thin red text, also show them this shop. This design is, again, amateur. So the cash shop operates in Suba points because it's made by our old friend Suba Games, same people who made Dream of Mirror Online, another crap MMO I've played on this series, and honestly, it was just as bad. So, super points. 6,500 points will set you back $9, and the shop is, well, expensive. I mean, a name change is just under 29,000 super points. So, changing your name is a $45 expense, but you can pick up an absolute load of health potions for around 1,000 points. Literally throw enough money at this game and you will never die. Push on and the Kill X quests are ramping up. It started as Kill 8, then 10, then 12, and now we're up to 15 and I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to get worse. Hand in more quests, and then I get told to, in the game's actual words, go and talk to that man over there, the one who looks like a pervert. Okay, seriously, who did the English localization for this game? Was this a joke? 
Did that translation actually get approved by the upper management? Super Games, do you even know that that line is in a child-friendly anime game under your authority? If you did, then your content is questionable at best. If you didn't, then your copy checking is incompetent. Either way, this reflects really badly on you as a company. And when you speak to the guy, there's no relation to him being a pervert at all. He's just an alchemist, meaning the pervert line was added for a joke. That's not funny. The dude needs some slimes killed, so we go and kill some slimes. King slimes, actually, and they actually hurt. Also not sure why they're all called king slime. They're all the same size and shape as the other slimes, and there's loads of them. They can't all be the king. Let's see what happens when you die. Oh, I can just choose to revive here, or a safe zone. Well, here, I guess, and yeah. You just get back up and carry on. So death, in the early game, is meaningless. Great. I'm also willing to bet once you get past a certain level, probably level 10, death will mean experience loss. Let's see how that pans out. Sell a load of junk and buy 200 health potions because tactical combat is boring. Abilities are overrated. Just chug your way through every fight because that's how the game is designed to be won. Off to the harbour and once we arrive, ah, oh, the music rocks. This is fiesta online levels of European techno disco and I've been killing endless waves of repetitive enemies for the last two hours. So I'm going to take any excuse I can to find to do something entertaining. Watch as I dance. The moment I stop playing the game and start moving to the music is the moment you know I've given up any hope of it being a good game. At least the map has the quest givers and receivers highlighted with a little flourish, that's nice. But what in the name of anime is this? Why is there a fairground in the middle of the city? And can I ride the- yes. Yes, I can. Riding the roller coaster locks your camera in place. You can rotate it round but not move it away. This is all you get to see. And the roller coaster isn't the only fairground ride. There is a gyro drop. Let's just marvel at this together. Oh, it's basically Roller Coaster Tycoon, isn't it? And there's a bear spinny thing, but hang on. This is spinning the wrong way. It's going backwards. Look, it's spinning me backwards. I thought this was a fan remastered version. Why is it going backwards? Fans wouldn't have missed that. Actually, hang on. If it's a fan remastered version, why did the cash shop still use Suba points? Isn't that a trademark? This is just Suba Games saying fan remaster to bring old fans back, isn't it? Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but usually pirate ships don't actually go all the way over the bar do they? The pirate ship ride just swings up pretty high on both sides. It doesn't actually do a full loop because you're not strapped into it. That's the whole point. Chat to the goddess Luna. She says there's an aura turning people into demons, which is terrible, I'm sure. But a more dire and immediate problem, you cannot pet the dog. Naught out of ten, literally unplayable. Mount the fungus cake. There's something I never thought I'd say, but from now on it's going to be my new chat line. Hey gorgeous, wanna mount the fungus cake? No? You don't? That's fine. I'll just go back to playing Lunar Online Reborn. This magic dude has the same model and anime overlay as the pervert from earlier despite being a different person, and I am sent on the standard talk to everyone in town quest line. These types of MMOs, these low budget, low effort, anime inspired, questionably child friendly MMOs really irritate me. Games like Fiesta Online, Dream of Mirror, Lunar Online, because they're hiding behind the whole anime angle or the child friendly angle as an excuse for just being bad. Being anime inspired or child friendly doesn't mean you have to be crap. It's not a justification for having extremely tedious systems or overflowing text or badly formatted quest boxes or broken cash shops. You don't get to be forgiven for all that just because you're aiming at the anime crowd and expecting them to accept lower quality game design. And of course there's an enchantment system. Why wouldn't there be an enchantment system? I expected as much, but what I didn't expect was the surreal moan when you enchant stuff. Just have a listen.
I accept every quest available in the city and set off to do them. The next quest needs me to go to the ruins of Blue Sky Tower, but my map only has an exit to the ruins of Draconian. Now I'm gonna guess it's a translation error and both ruins are the same place, so let's go and find out, and yep, I was right. And oh, there's a lot of quest enemies here, fantastic. And I die. And yep, there it is. Now the experience loss on death kicks in. If you choose revive here, you now lose experience. So I revive at a safe place, which just happens to be right next to where I died. That's handy. I need to get an item from these leopards, but it's not a 100% guaranteed drop, so here begins the grind. Oh, and these knolls make a really annoying sound when you hit them. Have a listen. Then I spot another player. I try to chat to them, but no response. Shame, would have been interesting to ask another player why they were actually playing. Out of curiosity, I right click on the other player and one of the options is date dungeon. Now there is no way that means what I think it means. So I click on it and, oh my God, it does. No, no, this is not a thing. This cannot be a thing. You can search for other people by gender, by age, by American state, there's a drop down location finder. You can see all the available players sorted and then PM them or invite them to chat or go on a, as the game puts it, date dungeon, which it says is to gain experience, but oh God, no, this is wrong. Super Games, is this a system that you really think is acceptable? You can literally set your age to anything and then search for people within that age bracket. This is sketchy as hell. There is no way this system is going to appeal to anyone but the creepiest of creeps. No, this is wrong. And beyond the inherent wrongness of this system, the actual format is a pile of crap. Look at how many lines of text are overlapping. This game is a joke. If you are personally responsible for this system being in the game, if you are the executive that said, this is a good idea, put this in a game, you should be embarrassed. I try and forget about that absolutely disgusting system and get back to killing and questing, but the game doesn't just drop items, it drops item boxes and you automatically pick the boxes up and then you open them and maybe get stuff. So my inventory is being flooded with random mystery boxes. And don't worry, you can buy an inventory expansion in the cash shop. So this is a designed problem. Another attention to detail issue, the quest needs me to gather cobalt skin, but the item drop is called cobalt leather. I mean, I don't expect you'd be able to keep your quest and item descriptions consistent when you're spending so much time perfecting your in-game dungeon dating search engine. Honestly, that search window was the most detailed thing I'd seen so far. Here's another sound issue. If you click to attack something and then click outside of the game window, the game music cuts off, but the sound effects continue. What kind of process are you running where the background music and the combat sound effects run at different priorities of window focus? The Kill X quests are up to 20 by now. It is really, really repetitive. There is zero strategy beyond hit enemy drink potion and nothing is aggressive, so you're never in any danger of being piled. There is no excitement here. I find another player, Henrik. Clearly, they drank the shrinking potion, and by comparison, we both look ridiculous. To return to the previous area, you must use this portal. But look, the image on the other side of that door is just a flat picture within the archway. God, even PlayStation 1 games had pseudo 3D graphics through portals. Hand in all the quests, get even more, and then return. And look, the portal has a 3D effect from this side. Why couldn't you do it from the other side? Why could you do 3D one way and not the other? Was there just not enough time in the development budget? Were you too busy searching for dungeon dates? This fetch quest needs me to take a note from this knight by a tower to a guy on a field and back four times. And my reward is a quest where I need to kill 30 kobolds and 20 gnolls. 50 enemies for one quest. Wow, I've been playing about four hours now and I'm wondering if any other game mechanics are going to make an appearance at all. Here's a stupid thing as well. I get a new skill, a lightning strike, but to use it, I need to be under the effects of the blessings of Mephistopheles but I don't have the skill which gives that blessing. I have other blessings, but not that one. And you buy the skills in a set order, meaning that skill will eventually come up in the future. Why would you give players a skill they can't use until they get another later skill? While I'm killing 50 enemies, let's have a read of some reviews, shall we? Couldn't create an account. I'm sure it's amazing. 
It's okay, I guess. Kinda weird though, bad graphics, but I'm still playing with my pals, so... Lots of women. Unless you're a passive gamer like me, who wants to watch bots do their thing, then... Don't. 240 hours AFK in this game. So good. MMO auto hunt equals zombie. Sad. Over 800, not including the hours before this was on Steam, hours non-stop botting grinding and I'm level 64. Don't do it. Anime titties. Very good game. Yes, there is an auto system, but for me it's a new perspective for games. You can see it happening on popular mobile games with idle functions too. Focus on management upon operational play. There is much more to enjoy than grind and hunt. If you're reading this, run away from this game as fast as you can, as far as you can. Not only is this game terrible and full of bugs with admins that don't contribute, but this community is toxic and full of creeps. One of the things the kobolds can shout in the little speech bubble above their head is Do you think I'm an easy one? I'm not just a kobold, I'm a red kobold. Despite literally being called brown kobold. On the quest, kill brown kobolds. Finally, after what feels like forever, I kill all 50 enemies, hand the quest in, and unlock a new quest from Marcus. And great, he wants 30 gnolls killed. And is it snowing in the game? What is this effect? Is this snow? Is this pollen? Is this tears from all the people trying and failing to find dungeon dates? We may never know. One really annoying aspect is you cannot stack quests for the same enemy. So one quest wants 20 gnolls killed, then the next wants 30 gnolls killed. But you can't accept them together, they're a quest line. It's functionally no different to telling me to kill 50 gnolls. Here's an exploit, a pro gamer strat for Luna Online Reborn for all you hardcore Luna fans out there. The battle heal ability restores your health but can only be used when in combat. But the game counts in combat as, are you currently targeting something? So just target something, heal yourself, and then untarget it. Boom. Healed. Pro gamer strat. Inventory full again, half the stuff is useless, so I just throw it away, finish Marcus's null killing quest, and the map shows even more new quest givers. This next quest is actually given to me by a kobold, who wants me to get her ball back from the lizards. Right, so you have lost your ball, that's the plot, and I need to get it back, okay? And I do this by killing lizards. But I need to collect seven balls. And each lizard seems to have around a 30% chance of dropping an item. Christ, game, just stop. Stop trying to pretend you have a plot and just have the kobold say, go and kill 40 lizards. I would respect you more if you did that. None of this stupid, but we have a plot nonsense. Just embrace the fact you are filling time with repetition and roll with it. Every fight's the same, and fighting is like 95% of the game. The other 5% are just walking backward and forward while drinking potions and not finding dungeon dates. The kobold gives me an axe. I show the axe to the knight, he says that's an orc axe, and sends me to the next map, the Zalacania Outpost, which has orcs. There you go, some lunar online lore for all you lore hounds out there. Hope you're happy. What do you think the bear enemies say? That's right, they say... Of course I want to be in a cola commercial, let me call my agent. Or, the amount of jobless bears is growing, unemployment is our greatest enemy. Or, I have a friend who eats honey and wears red short sleeve t-shirts. See earlier when I said the guy that writes the descriptions clearly just doesn't care? That is proof. If you did write the English lines for this game, please get in touch with me. I have so many questions, and all of them are various levels of why. This next quest needs me to find 20 money pouches, and I find them by killing these versions of gnolls. And after I kill 8 gnolls, I found 1 pouch. So no, I'm not doing this anymore. This does not spark joy. I have wasted several hours of my life, and I don't know if it was worth it. Luna Online Reborn is forgettable. In fact, I'm willing to bet if you watch the entire worst MMO ever series, this will be one of the episodes you look at weeks from now and ask yourself, have I already seen that? And only after watching it will you go, oh yeah, that's the crap one with the dungeon date thing. The UI is both bland and small while also being cramped and far too flashy. The text formatting in quest box or pop-up windows is amateur. I would say the combat is aggressively boring, but even that sounds interesting. It's mediocrely boring. The plot is so bland I forgot it as I was reading it. The game is so incredibly forgettable I've had to refer to my notes every few minutes because I keep forgetting what the game is even called. Seriously, I'm writing the script and I cannot for the life of me remember what I've just played. It's a good thing I keep notes when playing because I've blocked out the last six hours. My brain has made me forget it because it is so incredibly dull. If this game were a spice, it would be flour. 
If this game was a music genre, it would be empty room ambience. This is the game version of a one pound frozen pizza. You won't really enjoy it, it doesn't have anything special going on and you will forget you've even experienced it the next day. But it's also a game with quest dialogue, go and talk to the guy who looks like a pervert, and a date dungeon. Which means the only memorable bits of this game are memorable for being terrible, bordering on actually genuinely inappropriate. So to end the review, Super Games, I will award Lunar Online Reborn, please get rid of the date dungeon, I am genuinely being serious, Super Games, do you really want to be endorsing this? This is terrible. Also, I forgot what the game was called as I was playing it. Out of ten. Thank you for watching. Another big thank you to the supporters over on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only a pound a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord and our subreddit. And as always, have a great day.